This is the Sony A7R Mark V, and I've owned it for coming up to three months now, and these are the top five things that I love about this camera. And I've made it just strictly five things for the sake of this video, but there's a lot more. I could do a whole lot of talking about this camera. So let's make a start. I want to start this off with one of the most simple features, a feature that you would expect any camera to have, and that's autofocus. But you know why? This camera has the best autofocus I've ever experienced. In any camera I've owned, tested, rented, just, just had a go with. When Sony turned around and said that the autofocus from this, due to the AI capabilities in it, had 50% better autofocus, I was just like, well, great stat. And what? But using it, well, it's not just good, it's just, I don't know, like, it's sick. And the A7S III, which I'm using right now, which I've loved for like the last 18 months, two years, yeah, well, the autofocus in this makes the autofocus in my A7S III look like a bag of it just works. It predicts exactly what you're wanting to focus on. It tracks it so well throughout the whole frame. You could be taking photos or filming someone and as they turn around, sometimes my E7 S3 would just lose focus. It wouldn't be able to do face tracking. Whereas this actually knows where the person is at all times, even if they're looking away from you. To have something that just works so well and you don't have to really put much effort into it, oh, just the sense of satisfaction is just amazing. Like, really good. Number two on the list is this extra wheel on top, this extra customizable button. This wheel is normally the exposure value compensation wheel. Uh, if you're shooting in, let's say, auto, aperture priority, auto ISO, uh, it just allows you to add exposure or take it away. And you can still use it as that on the A7R5, but this wheel is endless, like you can turn it forever. And because of that, you can go into the customizable settings and assign this to be anything you want. So I set mine to ISO. Normally it's on the back wheel and I have to move my thumb and turn it around. Uh, but now I have my ISO, my shutter speed, and my aperture all around my thumb and my finger. So I don't really have to move any of my hand at all. The endless wheel, I don't even know if they're called that, but I think they are. Um, but this was on the A7 Mark IV. Um, I don't know whether you could customize that in the A7 IV. Uh, if you can, then great, but you definitely can on the A7R Mark V, um, and it's it's great. If you don't want to use it for ISO, you can just assign it to whatever you want. But the point I'm trying to get across is, because we probably use cameras in a fast-paced, busy environment, and you're wanting to get things done efficiently, having everything there is just really convenient. The screen on the A7R Mark V. I've mentioned it a couple of times in my videos, and uh, I won't lie, I'm not a massive fan of it. In terms of reviewing what you've done on the camera, on the back of the LCD screen, I, I personally don't think it's the best quality. Uh, I feel like it's a little bit washed out. There may be some settings somewhere on the camera that you can change to, to improve that, but compared to my A7S Mark III, yeah, I much prefer the A7S III over this one. I've also mentioned how wobbly the screen is, at both going up and down. Uh, it's very similar to the A7S Mark III, but because this has got the 4D screen on it, I feel like it's, it's taken away from the structural integrity of it. But this video is about things that I love about the A7R Mark V, so why have I mentioned the screen? On my A7 III and older cameras before that, like the A7 I, this is, this is like prehistoric now. The screen used to be able to pull out, and that was really good because if you're wanting to hold the camera close to your body and then look down at the screen, say if you're wanting to do some filming, it's really convenient to do that. But for me, when it came to making YouTube videos and wanting to see yourself so you can get the exposure right, a screen which you couldn't actually flip around was not really working for me. So when the A7S Mark III came out and Sony added the flip out screen, which I'm using right now, it made things so much better for people like me who make YouTube videos. But annoyingly, when you're wanting to monitor the audio using headphones and you have the headphone jack in, I know this is the A7R Mark V, but just for demonstration purposes, when you pull the screen out, you can't turn it. So if you were wanting to hold the camera close to you and then look down at the monitor, you're gonna struggle to do that. Now on the A7R Mark V, not only do you have the flip out screen, same as the A7S Mark III, but you can also pull it out like this. Meaning that you get the best of both worlds when it comes to using the camera, especially when needing to use the ports on the side. The next one on the list is the use of APS-C mode. Now it's not a major thing because you can just crop in post. Doing the cropping camera is fairly destructive because you aren't saving anything outside of that crop. You end up with just that photo which you see in the viewfinder. But if you are wanting to take them photos in a particular way and you're not bothered about the crop or having to worry about it in post, then having it activated on your camera can save you a bunch of time. On my A7R Mark V, I have the APS-C mode set to C2. So I can press that button, it goes into crop mode, I can press it again and it'll come back out into full frame. 
It's never really been a thing I've used in the past because on my A7S Mark III, you only have 12 megapixels, so you don't really want to lose more pixels than 12. But this has 61 megapixels, so if you're using something like a 50mm lens, you can press your custom button, activate APS-C mode, let's say that 50mm lens goes into an 80mm lens, and with the camera still having around 26 megapixels when in APS-C mode, it's still plenty for most applications. So nothing is really out of reach when it comes to the A7R Mark V, you could do so much with it. Which leads me nicely onto my final point about the A7R Mark V, and I've said it in one of my first videos about the A7R Mark V. I bought this camera as a camera to mainly do photography with, but I wanted it as a B cam to my A7S Mark III when I needed it to do any filming. But honestly, I find myself reaching for my A7R Mark V a lot more than I reach for my A7S Mark III. Admittedly, low light on this camera isn't great when it comes to video, and the A7S Mark III and FX3 are still a match when it comes to other Sony cameras. But for the most part, it'll do pretty much everything I need from a camera, and it'll probably do everything you need for a camera at this moment in time. And with that, I'll let this video come to an end. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video and you want to see more content like this, make sure you hit the subscribe button, and if you do, I'll see you right there. Thank you very much for watching. Take care.